the session. So I know you have an idea about what this what we will be discussing today. So today's session is regarding linear programming. So we will see what is linear programming. What are the applications or where we are using this in our daily life? What are the applications of linear programming? So let's see all the details regarding linear programming quickly. Okay. So here is the definition of linear programming. So linear programming, uh, you have studied this in mathematics, you use these graphs and all to solve this linear programming uh, questions in your school. So we can call the linear programming as one method or uh, one simple way which will help us to perform what is called as optimization. So what, what can be called as this optimization or what is there in optimization? So we use this term optimization, right? So what is there in optimization? So we can have a discussion. So it's like, it's a simple method. And I'm given some, maybe some criteria or maybe some situation. I have some materials with me. So I have to make the best possible way or I have to make the best use of it. So that is what is being called as optimization. And this is the principle of linear programming. In linear programming, we are performing the process called the optimization. So it's like we feel like we need to do everything in the best possible way or in the beautiful way with what all things we have. So that, that can be called as linear programming or that can be called as the optimization. So we'll, we'll see this in really detail. So. I think you all can view the slide. So this is the definition of linear programming. So we are using the process of optimization to solve some issues. This may be real life problems or maybe some problems in our workspace or maybe some other type of problems, maybe some problems in industry or something related to that. So in linear programming, there are different steps to solve a problem or different steps are there for this optimization. So the first part is formulation. So it's like I, I have a real world situation now or I have a problem now. I need to convert this into a linear program in order to solve it. So it's not like I, I have a mathematical problem or something. I have a real world problem. I need to connect this real world problem or I need to translate it into a linear program. And this is the first step and we call this as formulation. So this is the first step and we call this as formulation. So you can see a diagram here. So this includes some of the steps of the linear programming. So the first we should have an objective function. So what we have to do or we should have an objective. So it's like we have to solve this problem or we have to do something. So that is what is meant by objective function. Then we'll, we'll have a set of linear equations or maybe some inequalities or maybe some constraints. We, I have some restrictions. So within that restrictions, I have to get the best output or I have to make the best output. So maybe we can call this as maybe from a company uh, perspective or maybe from a business perspective, it will be right, like what it's like, I have to make the maximum profit or maybe in some cases it will be like, I'll, I'll, I'll only have this minimum cost. So I'll only accept the minimum cost and I need to maximize my profit. So all these can be some objectives or all these can be some situations which we'll be able to achieve through what we call as linear program or through what we call as linear program. So the first step is if we are having some situations or some criteria, we have to map it to some linear program and then it is easy to solve. So the difficult part is formulation only where we need to map it to the particular mathematical model or something. So you have seen uh, or you have solved many of these linear programming type of problem solving in your school where you'll use this graphs or uh, we can solve this using matrices or maybe some computer programming concepts. So these are the concepts which is mainly used to solve the linear programming. 
Okay, so I have shared the screen and I think it is visible to you. So we have seen how we can solve this problem or what is in the concept of linear programming. Now we'll discuss everything in detail. We'll see some examples and all. So we are doing everything. It's like, I'll, I'll give you some example. I'm going to office daily. So maybe I'll, I'll drive uh, and I'll go to office or uh, maybe someone will come and pick me. So it's like, I, I need to choose the shortest route from my home to my office. It's like I'm, I'm selecting something from a group. Or it's like I'm working in an IT firm and I need to get my product done or I need to get my project delivered to one client, maybe within one week. So I have a team of some members. So how am I going to make them work or prepare them or we, how we are going to work as a team to complete our goal? So all this can be a part of what we call as the linear program. So solving a linear program is really easy. We can have the methods with us. We can solve it using graphs or matrices or even programming. So the hardest part is how we are going to formulate the problem. It's not a simple problem like I'm going from my home to office or maybe I have to submit a project or it's not these simple types of problems we are going to solve. We are going to interpret uh, something like maybe huge projects and also which will be very difficult to solve. So here, when you're given limited resources, you need to make the optimal utilization of those resources to achieve the best result or the best possible result. That is what you want by the process called the linear program. So I'll, I'll give you some example. So I think we have already discussed this in abstract problem or the traveling salesman problem and maybe in some other topic. So this is one of the famous example of the problem called the optimization problem. And this problem is being solved by the process of linear programming. So how am I going to convert this into a linear program and then I'm going to solve it. So let's say I'm a delivery man and it's my, it's my job. So I need to deliver six packages or I, he has to deliver six packages in one day. And I have to collect these all packages maybe from a warehouse. And the warehouse is located at a particular point. So I have to go there. I have to collect all the packages and I have to deliver these packages to maybe six locations that may be near or that may be uh, at some distance. So that we don't know. So let's see what is the situation. So here you can see a diagram, I think. So here there are six delivery destinations. You can see in the diagram. So there is a vehicle and this we can call this point A as the warehouse. So I have this destinations as U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So I forgot to keep the number between U and X, I'm sorry. So let's say any number as well. So you can see between A and U, there is a number called 10. Between U and W, there is a number called eight. Between W and Z, there is a number called 12. And between V and Z, there is a number called 20. So there are different lines or this is what we call as root. So these number of numbers, which is in the line indicates the distance between them, maybe let's say kilometer. So between A to V, we have 15 kilometer. Between uh, maybe X to V, we have 12 kilometer. So I have this diagram. How am I going to make this possible or how I'm going to make this delivery possible? But I have some restrictions or I have some criteria in which I have to save the fuel or my fuel usage should be very low. That is the first one. The second one is I have to deliver to all this destination in very less time or maybe in the shortest time. So I have to take the shortest route and this delivery should be on time. So there are some restrictions or there are some criteria. So what this person has to do. So this person has to make use of all the things he have and he should take a decision to make this system run in a uh, maybe a successful manner so that he will get the, all the packets delivered in a proper time. So this is what that has to be done by each person or this delivery man. So this uh, in this method also, this person can use what we call the optimization principle. So I think most of you have seen this uh, or you will have an idea about what is this 
criteria or what is this problem it's an abstract problem or the traveling salesman problem and this is a very important problem which is being told as examples for the different criteria or different conditions so here i have given the uh, how to solve this problem so what the delivery person will do he'll calculate the different routes he is having the distance in some cases we'll call this distance or we'll replace this distance with the cost cost to travel that particular distance that can be also an example or that can be taken we can also take that criteria as an example so here this person will calculate the different routes for going to all these six destination and after analyzing this with all the resources he have he will come up with the shortest route and that is the solution so here the technique of choosing the shortest route can be called as linear program and here this person can use the concept of operations research to choose this best route so i have given you a good explanation of uh, what is this operations research maybe in um, last days or day before yesterday's class i think so what is the term called as operations research we saw an example of an uber driver right so they they'll have to have a routing plan which driver has to be sent or when and how much amount they should charge so all these comes under that criteria and i i, I gave you some steps in which a person has to perform this operations research technique or this oar so there are person who are working in companies as operations research analyst so what they'll do is they'll have an analysis about the situation or what is the problem then they will use some mathematical or statistical model or they will map this to some mathematical or statistical model and then they'll solve this problem so this is a basic example or this is a very a very basic example so first i'll identify this problem so this is my problem so you have a clear cut idea about what is the problem then i'll i'll map it with a mathematical model then i'll come up with maybe one or two solution from that i'll i'll take the optimum solution and then i'll implement it so this is one example i think you have received some idea about what is this concept called a linear program so this is an example so now i'll i'll give you one more example this is much more interesting than that example so we are going to manufacture some chocolates so we are going to manufacture some chocolates so i have a chocolate manufacturing company and they are producing only two types of chocolates it's chocolate a and b and it is given that both the chocolate requires two ingredients that is milk and choco so we have a chocolate manufacturing company that produces two types of chocolate a and b and the basic ingredients are given as milk and choco now let's analyze the criteria so in order to manufacture the chocolate a and b they have given the requirements so each unit of chocolate a requires one unit of milk and three unit of choco and each unit of b requires one unit of milk and two units of choco so they have given the requirements also the company has given or the company has specified the requirements also so now they have given the stock with them in the company kitchen they are having a total of 5 units of milk and 12 units of choco maybe you are remembering some of the problems like some age problems and all you have studied so here they have already mentioned as the stock it's like 5 units of milk and 12 units of choco so we have some situation with us now it's obviously from a company background or from a business background so the profit will be there so on each sale the company will make a profit of rupees 6 when the chocolate a is sold and rupees 5 when the chocolate b is sold i'll i'll give you once again the whole idea so we are going to manufacture some chocolate so we have two chocolates here chocolate a and b and the amount of ingredient required to manufacture both these chocolates are different and it is also specified to us the next condition is the amount of raw materials we have to manufacture this chocolate is also given 
So it's like milk and chocos. How much is the amount they have given it to us? And from a company perspective, on the sale, uh, they have also mentioned the profit also. It's like after selling A, they'll have a, once they sell this uh, chocolate A, they'll have a profit of rupees six and for B, they'll have a profit of rupees five. Now the aim of the company or what the company wants is they wish us to maximize their profit. So our question is we want to find out how many units of A and B should they produce respectively. So this is what the question which we are going to answer through the criteria called the Lidium program or through the optimization technique. So I have uh, just formulated a table so that it will be easy for us to solve this. So here in this table, I have mentioned the chocolates as A and B. And for chocolate A, we need one unit of milk and three units of choco. And the profit per unit is rupee six. And for B, we need one unit of milk and two units of chocos, and the profit is rupees five. And the total which is there in the kitchen is given as milk has five units and choco has 12 units. So I'm, I'm just going to see this mathematically. So I'm going to assume that the total number of units by A, B, X and the total number of units by B, B, Y. And I have assumed that the total profit can be Z. Now we are going to analyze the situation. So what will be the total profit that is made by the company or the total profit that the company makes? It's like total number of units of A and B produced multiplied by their unit cost. So we can write an equation like profit is equal to or the maximize, we are, we are go, our aim is to have this value of Z as maximum profit. So we can write this as Z is equal to 6X plus 5Y. So it's like our aim is to maximize the value of Z in this particular condition. Now the next criteria is we are going to think from the perspective of raw materials. So for each unit of A and B, it requires one unit of milk. And the total amount of milk that is available is five units. So for A, we need one unit of milk and for B, also we need one unit of milk. So it's like X plus Y is less than or equal to five. So we have seen two criteria now. Then, what about the chocos which is needed to manufacture this chocolates A and B? So the total amount of chocos is 12. And for the A, chocolate A, we need three units and chocolate B, we need two units. So we have come to a uh, representation like 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 12. So now we have two inequalities and these two inequalities need to be satisfied for the company to make the maximum profit. So these two inequalities has to be satisfied, then only the company will be able to make the maximum profit. So I think you have received some idea of how we, are, how we have analyzed a particular situation and how we have formulated this or how we have, we have changed it or arranged it into some mathematical format. So this is what which we are going to do by the process called the linear programming. Or this is the technique which we will follow uh, for solving the questions uh, with the concept of optimization. Uh, so now I'll, I'll tell you some of the uh, significance of the linear programming. So it's like nowadays, this, um, this linear programming is having very high significance. It's like uh, for every existing real world problem, we'll have some solution through the evaluation of the resources that are existing. And uh, we have to make a study on them and then we, have, we can come up with the solution. So this is being widely used in different fields, like maybe industries in marketing, finance, maybe in food and agriculture, engineering, the manufacturing industry, energy industry, in microeconomics also, in all that fields also, maybe in transportation, we already saw this transportation optimization, right? So in all these fields, we are using this concept of linear programming. Now, now I'll give you one more example. Uh, so I have a company. So my aim is to maximize the profit. So as a, as a company owner or someone, maybe as a company representative, I can use this linear uh, expressions 
maybe like how much raw materials i have to use are all the machines working properly are there any issues with the machines so what all are the constraints how much time i'll i'll take to manufacture a particular product so how much products i have to manufacture i i want to maximize my profits so what all criteria i can take or what all necessary actions i can take on the basis of time maybe raw materials maybe on the basis of workers or maybe on the basis of machines so all these can be done only after formulating this into a mathematical setup so this is being done by the linear programming where we use all the resources in an efficient manner to reach our goal or to solve this criteria or to solve this issue so i'll i'll give you some examples which will help you to understand the concept of linear programming in much detail so this is being used in different areas like food and agriculture energy industry transportation manufacturing industry and all so we'll see the application in each and every sector that too in detail so the first step or the first application or the field which uses the concept of linear programming or optimization is food and agriculture so this linear programming model can help the farmers we have never thought of we are going to implement or we are going to assess the farmers through some mathematical model so this model can help in decision making like which crops they want to grow or how they can attain maximum profit or how they can improve their production how much resources they need or how the resource allocation has to be even in the feed uh, what all maybe i'll say um, we use some fertilizers and all right so how much amount what they have to do all these criteria or all these things we can calculate by using the concept of linear programming so this linear programming provides an important role or helps in determining what crops a farmer has to grow how, how much or how to use the irrigation facilities efficiently how can a farmer increase his revenue so all these things comes under what we call as linear programming so now we'll see this in detail so all these fields you can see right this is what a diagram which represents the linear programming in agriculture so this is being used in crop rotation in feed mix in product transportation land allocation irrigation or crop pattern so it's like all these field we need some mathematics or we need to make some analysis that analysis can be made with the help of linear programming so that's the advantage or we have some maybe some programs to analyze all these things which work in the base of this optimization concept so with the coming of linear programming what all problems can be solved in the agricultural field so i have mentioned some of the issues so these are all the situations we have already seen so in all these sectors this linear programming or this optimization technique is effect, uh, helping these farmers so the first one is feed mix problem i'll i'll give you something in detail so with the linear programming model or with some mathematical model inside this linear programming there are different algorithms all for this linear programming so based on these some algorithms or based on the linear programming model they can formulate some feed mixes it's like there will be a minimum nutritional requirement for every organism there will be a minimum nutritional requirement so we can take and we can make these mixes with the those things which satisfy or which have this minimum cost and which satisfy all the energy conditions or all the nutritional requirement so we can have an analysis and we can have this linear program in such a way that it will minimize the overall prices of this live livestock feed so it's like if the price is reduced maybe the farmer or the person who is doing this can use it for some other purpose and this is uh, all seasonal it's like different fields will be, feeds will be available in different areas and that will also be seasonal so this can help these programmers to some extent because maybe in some season they they can use this programming and they can have an analysis about yeah these much of components and that too in this particular format can be given to this as a feed so in that area we have an use of this principle called the optimization and the next one is crop pattern how to optimize this crop pattern i'll i'll tell you today we we all know that our population is increasing 
so our our resources are limited like we are, maybe most of the people live in flats and also we have limited resources we have limited uh, facilities available so we need to have an analysis about how these patterns has to be maybe the irrigation patterns or what are facilities how in which area we need to do this crop pattern or what is called as crop rotation how we should rotate these crops it's like we all know the basic concept like uh, the same crops will not be planted in the same same land for a long time right so we have to do this crop rotation so there will be many constraints that needs to be considered we, we have to consider the market we have to consider this weather conditions so all those constraints which are affecting and there will be different seasons of the year so in different seasons uh, mostly these farmers will do this different crops so how they are going to plan this so the linear programming can identify uh, a particular appropriate plan so that it will help these farmers to identify what crop rotation plan they have to follow to achieve the maximum goal so that they can increase their income they can improve the productivity and they can make use of all the existing resources that are with them in the land allocation and optimization what is uh, the significance of optimization or linear programming is that it will help us to divide the land into different portions so which product will be uh, or which cultivation or which crop will be beneficial or which crop we can use to increase the profit maybe they they can allocate the land for uh, different crops like maybe rice or pulses or maize or something and another part is agriculture product transportation we have seen one example where we understood that how much is this transportation important so maybe there will be some items which which will have to reach the market at particular time because maybe they'll get bad or all these things are there or we have to consider all these factors so this linear programming should be optimizing the route of the uh, this agricultural products to reach the destination so it's like they have to minimize the distance they have to minimize the cost of transportation and this should reach the particular site or particular market within a particular span of time so all these are important so the next one is irrigation so you know right Uh, most of them follow maybe channel irrigation or drip irrigation all these facilities are there but there are some time periods or maybe in some season we have to vary this and there will be places which have this water scarcity and uh, there will be high demand for this water and all so the linear programming model can help them to manage this uh, irrigation purposes or how they have to do this irrigation and all or how a person can utilize or effective utilization of water in this irrigation irrigation so that it can improve their agricultural maybe agricultural maybe farming or something so in all these areas this linear programming plays an important role or it's the optimization technique which is having an important role now the next part is dietary so it's like the mean the basic thinking of linear programming can be used in this dietary also it's like we all maybe in some point of our time we all do this diets so it's a powerful tool to aid in planning for this dietary needs i'll i'll give you an example so we similar to these feeds and all it's like we will have some basic nutritional requirements so there are foods which are cheap that will satisfy these nutritional requirements so we can have a combination of them in our diet or we can have that in our diet so in this case of dietary we will have some constraints or we will have some restrictions like there will be dietary guidelines or maybe some nutritional values will be there so we, we have to accept or we have to follow all these things and then we have to do this diet so the mathematical modeling of linear programming can provide assistance to this method also now we'll move on to the next part so after dietary we have this transport transportation optimization so we have already seen this in very detail in the example of knapsack problem or the traveling salesman's problem so here in this the main important part is for the it's not like the production of commodity is important it's also the distribution that matters so we have to find out the optimal method or optimal strategy for the distribution of commodity so there are many supply centers right so from the factories where they are producing to the locations 
maybe in some markets or we have to reach it to some locations called the destination. And there will be some criteria like we have to reduce the cost and we have to uh, make this product reach there within a particular time span or time period. In all these cases, we use the concept of linear programming. Now, and now I'll give you what is the advantage of this linear programming in this transportation. So it's like a factor in uh, something which was uh, arrived by maybe some scientific means or maybe some experimental purposes. I'll give you, if a company is uh, reducing its cost of transportation, it can improve the performance of the company. And I'll give you the reason. So the improvement in the transportation plan can help a company in its bottom line. So it means there is a particular cost saving that is occurring. So some researchers have shown that a 5% reduction in the transportation cost of a company has impacted to maybe 30% increase in its sales. I'll give you some example. If you are on time or if you are on time, maybe for the delivery and all, we know the things, right? We have to deliver things on time. So if you are doing all these things and if you're performing this transportation optimization, it can even impact in the, or it can even have an economic impact in the company. It can improve the performance of the company. Uh, so it's like a research has shown this. A 5% reduction in the transportation cost of a particular company has impacted maybe 30% increase in the sales. And maybe if you are giving so much importance to this transportation optimization, maybe we, we will receive so many new, new orders. Or it can help or it's better that our service has improved and we will be receiving so many new orders. So this linear programming model can in turn help in minimizing the shipping cost or maybe the transportation cost. And it can also meet all the person's demand and our capacity or our minimum limit will not exceed. So all these can be some of the points of the linear programming or this optimization concept. Then this can be also used in pilot schedulings and routes. So I'll, I'll tell you the concept. Most of the airlines are using this concept of linear programming. It's like, uh, you know, all these are seasonal. So maybe in some seasons, the flight tickets will be high. And so all these are predictions, right? So this can be done with the help of linear programming. So maybe in these vacations and all, we have seen like these prices will be high. So it's like we can have an analysis of it earlier with the concept called as a linear program. So airlines are mostly using this linear programming to optimize their profit maybe according to the different criteria. It's like, what is the customer demand? Maybe most of the customers are demanding something. So obviously this can in turn help in their profit or maybe based on the different seat prices and all the, so these airlines will be using this concept of optimization. So they can also have a control over their expenses when they use the concept of linear program. Now this, yeah, as it is transportation optimization, this can be used by different areas of transportation, like maybe shipping or maybe buses or train routes. All these are factored or all these are scheduled using the concept. Now we'll move on to the uh, next part. So the next part is energy industry. So how this is affecting this energy industry. So now we know that now the demand or the demand of this energy has increased, right? So we have to satisfy this demand, maybe for all the companies or all the corporations or maybe societies, we have an increasing demand of energy. So we can have two to three criteria to decrease this or to cope up with this. So we have to, the first thing is we have to efficiently use these resources. The second thing is we can rely on something other. So maybe we can rely on maybe solar or maybe some wind energy or something. So we have to, have an analysis and we have to depend on, or we have to replace this with some other technology so that we can match the demand. So once this cost of all the equipments of this energy industry increased, so everyone started, every company started the management of their energy systems. So thus this becomes a subject of linear programming. Thus this came to be a part or thus the energy industry started using the concept of linear programming or, or the optimization. Now I'll, I'll give you 
what is the growing importance of the energy industry or how how this energy has to be conserved so we have already seen this so the first one is efficient use of this resources for the different corporations so that was the first part then how much value it adds to the economies at the macro level or the different level then from the environmental perspective or from the sustainable development perspective then similar to that agricultural industry these are some of the problems that are studied in the energy management and are being solved by the concept called the linear programming or the optimization so the first one is increasing energy efficiency so we are going to avoid these energy losses and all and we are going to meet this energy efficiency then we are going to choose some of the alternative sources maybe like solar or something then we will preplan or plan all these energy processes before implementing it then we'll deal with some corporations we'll we'll follow the guidelines of maybe government or other agencies in order for having this optimization or in order to perform this optimization uh, okay now i'll i'll give you another example so the first one uh, next one is efficient manufacturing so in manufacturing industry this linear programming is being used on a regular basis so even by those those persons who have studied or are mechanical or the sort of oil engineers they are using the concept of efficient manufacturing or the concept of linear programming in their manufacturing field so i'll i'll give you some areas so the first one is amazing supply chain operation then the second one is shelf space optimization then the third one is uh, delivery routes and the fourth one is machine learning so we can see each one of them in detail so the first one is analyzing the supply chain operation so i'll i'll give you uh, the aim of the supply chain operation or what is the concept or the aim is they have to maximize the efficiency and the minimum aim is they have to operate in a minimum cost so we have two criteria or two restrictions here i told you in the linear programming concept we'll have some restrictions and we have to work along with the restrictions to get the maximum profit or to get the optimized way so here the two criteria are the first one is maximum efficiency and the second one is minimum operation cost so what is mean by the supply chain is i'll i'll give you some idea so each supply chain will have some particular supply capacity maybe they'll they'll have this much supply capacity so they'll have some destinations and they'll have to fill this destinations demand and that to maybe serially and we know that the cost of transportation also comes under this linear programming so these cost of transportation from one particular point to another point maybe the destination varies linearly maybe with respect to the quantity that is being supplied so from this linear programming model the manufacturer can reconfigure their storage outlet or maybe they can take some actions like maybe they can change their storage outlet maybe they can adjust their workforce their timing and they can reduce all the issues maybe some bottlenecks in their industry or in their particular field now the next thing i'll i'll tell you is that is the shelf space optimization i think this example or this feature will be somewhat easy for you so we know that uh, in these uh, shopping centers like uh, walmart or maybe high, some big bazaar or maybe reliance so maybe some malls in our area will go and we'll shop from them so optimization of this linear programming concept is mainly used in one area which is being used by these type, mall type of uh, buildings or maybe these malls or maybe walmart or something so i'll i'll give you one idea they have to have an analysis of their customer or they have to have an analysis of their customers shopping pattern so we are having lots and lots of products now maybe uh, one product one single product from different brands are there so in the market we have lots and lots of product so this company or this uh, walmart or maybe anything they have to have a better understanding about what the customer want or what the customer needs so you can think about uh, you are going to some place where you are going to purchase these things maybe groceries or something so i have an idea about the arrangement they they'll arrange all those things according to this linear programming only so they'll have an analysis about this customer shopping pattern 
it's like i'll i'll tell you maybe near to these billing sections and all they'll they'll keep some chocolates and all so all those kids who are coming with their parents maybe during the building they'll they'll pick up some chocolates and the parents will pay for that so it's actually some of the tricks or the mechanisms which are being followed so the customer shopping pattern is getting analyzed and then we are placing all these things in the proper places or in the respective areas so here the objective is to make it easy for the customers to maybe locate and select the right products and some of the constraints may be there uh, in some areas there may be some limited shelf space or there may be a lot more variety of products so all these can be called as the constraints and our objective is to make the customer satisfy or it, it it could be easily locatable for those customers or he has to get all the things maybe in one look or something so that that is the aim and we have some constraints and we are working out this and we are getting the output or we are implementing it so this can be one example so now the next is optimizing the delivery route this is also being used by the every industry we can't say any industry this is being used by all the industry so service industry uses this technique of optimization to find the best route for the multiple salesman traveling to multiple cities so here we have seen in the previous example it was only the traveling salesman or the knapsack problem so where we have a single person so here in this service industry it is using the optimization for this multiple salesman traveling to multiple cities and we have different types of algorithms inside this like clustering greedy algorithm and all so this is being used by the companies like amazon or fedex for their purposes and here also the aim for this process or the optimization remains the same that is the operation cost and the time should be minimum and the delivery should happen on time so this is the aim that is there so now the next part is machine learning so we have never thought of this concept of optimization is there in machine learning there is max in machine learning but we have never thought of this optimization so the supervised learning or this machine learning mainly works on the principles or, or works on the background of linear programming so here uh, in the working of the system we have a computer system so here we we have to fit it to some mathematical aspect or we have to change into some mathematical model or we have to train it to fit to some particular mathematical model so we are having some data which will be able to predict the values from some of the unknown test data we have some data and which will be able to predict some values from the unknown test data here also we are using this concept of linear programming or the optimization now there are different areas in engineering which also use this concept of optimization uh, mostly uh, the civil engineers or the architectural engineers or the manufacturing maybe the mechanical engineers everyone use this concept of optimization so this is also essential in the industry called as the engineering now i'll, I'll give you some more ideas or some more examples this is being used in finance so this linear programming is used to identify this budget or maybe asset allocation financial planning in all these areas we are not aware of whether they are using this linear programming or the optimization concept because we have never thought the concept of optimization or linear programming in this particular way in the marketing sector also linear programming is uh, being used it's like which media we should publish our ad or this is being used in the marketing research section so which media i am going to choose how much budget i have to assess to uh, or i have to give it to that media even in the social medias also this is being used so maybe for your clicks and all maybe for the ad clicks and all we are using this linear programming or this optimization technique to have an analysis so now what all carriers use this linear equation or this linear programming so without uh, thinking or without having an awareness about we are solving some linear equations or we are doing something related to the optimization or we are doing something related to linear programming there are different carriers which are using this 
so in mathematics we know it's like uh, linear equations means uh, it's it will solve maybe two or two more variables or maybe we'll produce a graph or maybe it will proceed to some straight line we'll have some equation x plus y equal to 2 maybe y equal to x plus 2 so in some of the popular careers uh, it's uh, it's a necessary or it's necess necessity I'll, I'll say it as a necessity you should have a better understanding or you should have an idea about this linear equations or something so it's even being used by these healthcare workers so these are the professions which uses the concept of linear equations or linear programming in their daily work so it includes business managers maybe financial analysts maybe computer programmers research scientists or resource managers, architects, builders, healthcare professionals, then some engineering category, it includes biomedical, mechanical, nuclear, or chemical engineers. So for these business manager, they, they, they'll have to calculate the measurements, they'll have to make the purchases, uh, they'll have to determine something about their employees. So I'll, I'll give you one example. So one person who is working as an advertising manager, so you have heard about these online campaigns and all, right? So a person who is working as an advertising manager, they may plan or they might plan an online campaign. So there should be a bit just all budget. So all these will work based on the linear equations only. So I have already mentioned something like in social media and all, we have this cost per, cost per click. So all this is a part of this linear programming. So the next profession we mentioned here is the financial analyst. We have already mentioned in finance, uh, in areas like budgets, maybe in insurance and in loans, we are using this concept. Maybe a financial planner, he can, uh, for example, I'll tell you, he'll use this li linear equations to determine maybe the total worth of a client stock. Then computer programmers are using this. Uh, maybe uh, they are mostly using this in troubleshooting, maybe identifying some network problems and all, maybe some network issues and all. Then these research scientists, mostly in the chemistry or biology field, all of them are using this concept. So I think you have some idea about what the concept of linear programming is. So thank you all for attending the session. And if you have any queries, you can send it to us and you can directly call me.